Good morning, my special love and healing ministry tribe. We thank God for this new day that he has made. And I will rejoice and I hope you rejoice too and be glad in it. Um, yes, this is ministration and uh, I'm continuing with the uh, contemplating prayer series. Today is the second part and um, why? Why should we pray? And not only pray, but pray ceaselessly. Um, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, I want to thank you. Holy Spirit, take over. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Last Saturday we saw um we, we started by looking at I started by looking at prayer. Prayer the master key and how um Jesus mothered that to us, right? In several places in the in the Bible, in his sojourn here with us on earth. And me, last year personally, when the Lord told me to start doing morning glory moments, which has evolved into morning devotions this year, um, the scripture he gave me was Mark chapter 1, verse 35. Not to be able to convince me to wake up early because I'm a morning person and I love that fellowship time with the Lord. But to use that as a reason to encourage other people to uh, make it a habit, those who can, right? <clears throat> that some people work midnight shifts and all of that. So, um, talking about believers, everybody. And so, praying at 5 a.m., their time, 4 a.m., 3 a.m., midnight. Well, while they're working, they could pray. But, you know, some people still want some reason. So, 
if Jesus could do that, just like we heard in this um, worship song, if Jesus could pray, if this person can pray, if this person want less of me, why not me? You know, and yes, if I don't pray, <coughs> Satan would make mess of me. So I am actually blessed, so blessed to continue this contemplative series on prayer. Um, this eighth month of the year, a month of new beginnings. Um, I, 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 I did not, I did not anticipate. In short, I don't anticipate nothing. He just gives the topics to me, but prayer I was like, what about prayer? But the more I'm learning, the more I'm like, Hey, and the more things I witness, the more I'm like, Hey, you know, so, um, today I look more closely at why we should make prayer a very important habit in our lives as Christians. Um, last night when I woke up, um, no, not last night, this early morning at 3 a.m., I looked at my phone to see the time because my plan had been to sleep until 7 a.m. It doesn't work, but I was hoping that I could stay in bed until at least 6 or 5. I just have some lazy time in bed. It's been so long since I had that kind of lazy time in bed. I'm like, ah, ah, papa. So other people can sleep like that. Me, I cannot sleep like that. And last night i slept at nine like on time or 15 minutes to nine so i was ready and i'd walk the whole day so my legs are still paining so i was sure that i could sleep till six but no i got up and looked at the time 3 a.m i was like hey yeah brain yeah you too so as i just looked at it something said check on what's up i saw someone had written to me at about 11 p.m and the first sentence where there's fire on the mountain I just turned the phone down and started praying. I started praying. And I started praising. And after I took the phone, I read the whole message. And I just responded with a prayer. What else can I do? So this is another reason why we should pray. So that we can encourage the brethren, right? Okay, well, the first uh, reason from scriptures, which I took as I was doing my research was that it's a divine prescription first thessalonians chapter 5 verse 17 to 18 i'm so excited to be using my physical bible <laughs> wow first thessalonians chapter 5 verse 17 to 18 pray without ceasing that's what i'm calling perpetually pray without ceasing in everything give thanks for this is the will of god in christ jesus concerning you um it might be a difficult one the second part in everything give thanks how can i thank god that my daughter died how can i thank god that my brother died how can i thank god so that's his will for me so he created me to come and go through pain and all of that but when you thank him, he gives you the grace to endure. And um, that's also life, you know. So I don't I don't look at it that way anymore. Uh, but I love praying without ceasing. Pray at all times. You know, you don't need to be on your knees and lock yourself up. Uh, even before now, I pray, I pray, I pray, I pray. I'm doing sports, I can pray. Once you are conscious, about the presence of God and how important that is in your life. After all, we saw prayer last week to be communication with God. So if he's your best bow, your heavenly father, wouldn't you want to be talking to him at all times? I converse with him like I say, hmm, Papa, this one, oh, Papa, hmm, Papa, hmm, Papa, hmm, Papa, hmm, Papa, let's go, Papa. How you think, Papa? So there are different kinds of prayers. We'll get there in one of these um ministrations but today we are focused on the why so the first reason is that it is a divine prescription it is such a divine prescription that jesus himself told us in matthew chapter 7 verse 7 he said ask and it will be given to you is that not so um i don't know if i'll call it easy to do ask um Yesterday, I was celebrating my new earbuds, you know, the, the Bluetooth thing that you connect to the phone and it works. 
on Thursday morning, no, not Thursday, Wednesday morning, I tried, I came back from the village on Sunday and I kept charging the old one and it wasn't picking up. And I was talking to God all the time, saying, well, Papa, where is this here? But I know how sometimes when I'm walking out, I want to be listening to a message and I cannot put the earpiece because it's going to tie me down. So I need new earbuds. Oh, Papa, what has happened to these earbuds? And no, me, I don't have money to buy earbuds now. Da, la, 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 la. But I wasn't really asking. I was just grumbling, murmuring. So on Wednesday morning, I was like, ah, Papa, three days after I'm talking about earbuds, you're not even giving me a solution. He said, have you asked? I said, Papa, but am I not talking to you about it? He said, ask. I said, Papa, I'll ask who now. He said, put you on your status. Wow. Since I've been called a beggar before, I know I'm, I'm not afraid. I'm not ashamed of begging. So that's another way of asking. So I put it on my status and I wanted to be very specific because me, I'm not superfluous. So I said, because the last time I don't remember, I, I, my son told me he bought it for 6,000, but I thought that I had 5,000. I actually gave him 5,000 and I had to add 1,000, but I'd forgotten. So I said, who will bless me with 5,000? Let me buy new earbuds. I mean, I would have said, if who will buy for me to come and pick up? But because I didn't want to spend any money on transportation to go and be picking up earbuds, I said, who will bless me? And that was on Wednesday. Thursday early in the morning, and I put it only on my status, and I did not repeat the request. I didn't do screenshot, not I didn't show on any other platform, because what I had was status. Thursday early in the morning, my daughter calls me. Um, I call her my daughter. And she says, Mama, if you see 5,000, it's for me. I knew that it was for the earbuds. And so I started thanking my God. And once the 5,000 came in, I asked my son if I could send him that money so he should buy me new earbuds. And I sent him. Then he told me that no, it was the last time he bought for 6,000. So I sent him 6,200 francs. And then he saw one and he said, these are different. And he got them for 6,500. So I said, okay, I'm going to add, I'm going to give you the 500 francs when you bring it. Because he comes, uh, we see each other three times a week. So yesterday he brought my earbuds and I was sharing that to encourage someone. Ask and you shall receive. It's not a joke. I ask for earbuds. I ask for different things. I ask for, but ask, 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 ask. Yes, he knows everything before we ask, but he wants to see if you can even open your mouth and ask. Some people, I didn't grow up asking. Yeah, I didn't too because, well, my father used to just provide. But I had to learn and it's sometimes so uncomfortable asking because, well, some people you will ask and they wouldn't give. And it might be people you have been giving to before and you'll be thinking that, eh, I used to give you, now you're not giving me. Oh. The Lord can, can let me use that word ginger. The Lord can speak into, to anybody and that person is going to um, provide. Because, well, the Lord doesn't have hands and feet and he doesn't show manna from heaven anymore. That miracle money thing, me, I don't know me that one. So, he would, me, I've been used several times, several times. Since the beginning of this year, I cannot count how many times he has used me to resolve people's problems. People that I... I might never even see a game and all of that. And you know, who knows? That that was also their prayer. Papa, who is going to help me with this business? I want to start it. Papa, who is going to help me with this house? Papa, who is going to? Papa, who is going to? Papa, who is going to? And so, yes. Since everything I own is his own. Everything I have, not own. I have is his own. If he says, do this, do this. And money can even just enter. I'm happy. Oh, I have money. Nah, nah, nah. Send this to Susan. Do the pay your tithes. Do I just execute because other people have asked and so they're receiving through me and when I ask I also receive through other people so it is very important that we make it a habit to ask after all as a child if you're hungry will you not go and say my mom hungry she might know that you are hungry or she might not know you know she has just come back she's tired you know and maybe uh, uh, you are brought up in a house where you cannot go to the pot, right, to get food for yourself. So you must ask. So ask. Actually, scripture again encourages us to do this, not to be worried. Let's look at Philippians chapter 4 verse 6. Be careful for nothing, 
But in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be known, be made known unto God. Be careful for nothing. Don't be worried. I'm so grateful. My my sister and I, we've made prayer a, oh my God, I love it. And it has helped her a lot, you know, with um, anxiety and, and yeah, even me, uh, this morning in my, my happiness journal, that was all I was grateful for that prayer and praise are taking such preeminence in my life. Like once I saw that message yesterday, there's fire on the mountain. Me, I just started to pray. You know, I, I was, um, not that I was, I am in some group and, you know, I wrote something and somebody just came and took it like out of proportion. And I wrote because the Lord said, right to, and said all kinds of blah, 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 blah. I just bent my head immediately and I prayed and the Lord gave me a few words to put there. And that was it for me. Prayer helps. Like before the anger comes, the prayer would have, the anger comes and the prayer pacifies it. And then the prayer brings the wisdom on how to handle that situation. So that is another way of not being anxious. Because once it comes, because it will come, the enemy is there, he's roaming. Like he's, he's roaming like a roaring lion. He's, he's bitter. He is angry. He's frustrated. He's actually the chief depressor. He's depressed. He's everything. So he's looking. He's looking. So when this um, musician, no, 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 musician, whether it's a psalmist, I don't know. I'm sorry. I just knew his name today, Ebuka. When he says, I go pray. That means I will pray. If I don't pray, Satan will make a mess of me. Ah, okay. Oh, well, maybe for some people it doesn't work that way. But you know, oh my goodness, the life I now live, frankly speaking, is the best for me. When I think of my past, it was a mess. That's why in my very first book I said, I want to make my mess a message. It was a mess. So this messy thing is not a joke. And I learned of a term one day watching some message. They were talking of a blind witch. That is people who are being used without their knowing. Because there are some people who are consciously worshipping the devil. And doing his bidding and going around planting havoc, causing accidents, doing all of that. They themselves, they talk about it on YouTube. So I'm not accusing anybody. Then there are people who don't know. Maybe because you want to satisfy the lust of the flesh or the eye or the pride. Yeah, the, the, those demons, they penetrate you. They, they make it available for you, you know. The porn is there. On your laptop, you want to watch? Even on your phone, uh -uh. you don't need to buy a magazine anymore. Nobody needs to see you go into any store to buy a magazine or a CD player. Uh -uh. Just put there. Sometimes they even suggest it to you. Can you imagine that? So, yeah, the ones who say, I don't want to watch this. If not, it is there. The, the what? Some ringtones are terrible. That's so sensual. You're like, how do I reject this ringtone? I cannot reject the ring, the ringtone. So I start praying why that ringtone is singing, so that before the person picks up, I'm not my mind has not been corrupted with that song. You know, there's a lot of temptation and and all kinds of. Oh, you walk on the road, people are dressed anyhow. Men and women are now competing with who can be the most, the fittest, or who can wear the tightest trouser and all of that. Even inside church is there. You know, so that you really need to put on the armor, protect yourself. And as we shall see, prayer is one of those very powerful weapons. That is why I don't joke with Philippians chapter 4 verse 6. In everything, everything, there is nothing that I don't think. I, I was even telling my sister, before you tell me something, talk to papa about it. Because me too is still that papa that I talk to. I cannot, even if I just, you just want me to hear, yeah, and do what? First, just talk to Papa. And you might feel in your spirit, talk to Mark, talk to Mary, or talk to somebody, or talk to, oh, okay, just let it be. But first, talk to Papa. Unless it's not something that you really want some, you know, you want some, you just want to gist or share story. But if it's something that's on your heart, just talk to Papa first about it. Me too. I said, I just talk, I just, and you don't need to sleep on the floor, knee down, sit up. We'll look at all of those things. 
you don't even need to open your mouth, you know, like Hannah. She says, mm -hmm, even me this morning. I was just like, mm. so just do it. Do it because Matthew chapter 6 verse 33 tells us this. And this is Jesus again, oh, this is his prescription, oh. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So, yes, you want all these things? Some people want, some people work out there in America, wherever, Europe, UK. People work, I've been to America, right? I've lived in Europe. I was just blessed not to work that kind of work. But there are people who work two, three jobs, you know, and then they go to school again so that you can afford all those things. Because ask them, why why are they working like that? Well, because there are bills. The bills are coming from where bills don't just chase people who don't use anything. La la. So people tell me that, oh no, in America you cannot avoid bills. You can avoid bills. Why is everybody not working the same way you are working? Why is everybody not having the same amount of bills? Why? For example, if you buy a car on credit, you know, because a lot of things out there you just buy on credit. Okay, so if you are buying on credit, that means that you yourself know that you are borrowing. You are not even buying. You are borrowing. So you have to pay. And while you are paying, there's also the interest rate that is increasing. So you have to work like a slave to pay all those, what are they call the what to mortgage and all those things. Must you live in that kind of a house? Must you ride that kind of a car? Must you dress up like that? Must you, must you, must you? So if you want to, okay, fine, you will walk that walk. I have decided I'm not looking for all of those things. I will seek me first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all other things. And not like group, but things that are important, things that are necessary, things that are needed, even first for ministry. Because I don't have to live up to any standard set by man. Yes, people will have all kinds of opinions when you make such a decision. They will think you are foolish, you are this, you are that. But seek ye first the kingdom of God. And the day he wants to elevate you to that level, more than people who have been working, that they are toiling, working for 30 years. He wants to take you to the level even higher than them. You say, hey, that God the work, oh. That Jesus thing, the work, oh, all of that. And if he doesn't elevate you to that level, so what? You are already happy you where you are. You are contented. You are... When you have the kingdom of God, or when you are seeking it, and you have that peace that Jesus gives that surpasses human understanding. You can boldly approach the throne of grace and hold the, the, the footstool of the mercy seat. What else are you looking for? That what can satisfy that void in you? Because there are people who have amassed all those things first without seeking first the kingdom of God. I was reading about, oh, Van, is it Van Gogh? Yes. Who was he? I even hear that the man had gone to. Um, he wanted to, he was an evangelist for, is it one year? He had gone to something, something, something. You know, I'm studying it in the Billy Graham School of Evangelism. And after that, he just backslid and started painting and painting. And he painted like, what is 300 paintings in one year or two years and all of that. And then he himself took, off, took his life away. He said, life is not one living. It was so empty. Can you imagine? They talk about Jim Carrey, who, who makes what is 200 million per picture, whatever. And he himself said that at the end of it, when he gets home, he just goes, he just cries. He locks himself up and cries. That life is just so lonely. My goodness. Well, people, this is it for today. I just want to encourage us um, to pray. This is the first part of why, the why A. Uh, next Saturday, we're going to look at the why B. Um, my instructions are clear. I don't need to um, be labor, make it too long, except when uh, it has to go above 30 minutes and stuff. Um, the Lord is training me. I'm in a spiritual academy, so I follow instructions very carefully. And um, yes, 
please think about um if you are going for fellowship tomorrow corporate fellowship that's another um way of praying as we shall see eventually uh, because the bible says when two agree you know or when two or three are gathered in my name and um, how do you ascend the mountain of the lord you go by the word by the blood by the word you know by the spirit so all of that in prayer right that's the that's the means that's the means that's the currency okay so um father thank you so much thank you holy spirit i love the way you take over continue to have your way in our lives i commend it all into your hands this morning bless us all in the mighty name of jesus amen okay well you want to connect with church with our world's evangelistic association that's the association i belong to founded by my bishop bishop barry lesson ben alova she's in um ghana the link is there and uh, my sister princess princess clinton she does a chapter a day that's her own assignment a chapter a day chapter of the bible each day yesterday she wrapped up with uh, proverbs 31 so that's the book of proverbs is over today we are starting the book of ecclesiastes me i just put myself inside that ministry because whether i'm their life or not i'm following so I, i've studied my ecclesiastes chapter one today is very interesting and i really pray god that i can join her life today um so that we can reflect on it together because when you read it then you study it so that it can become a practical real reality in your life or how it has been a practical reality and we can share other things too so do that and then as for me and as for love and healing ministry we are so grateful and we are preparing to go back to the village next week for the second evangelism outreach so if you want to um support us uh, connect with us on any of our platforms our link trees there i thank god for my assistant who does a lot of things behind the scenes to make it possible for me to to do what i do um out here and for all those who pray for me and all those who send you know 10 pounds this that that it's never small the blessings will go around though just the same way as it is going around like this and so i'm just so grateful have a serene saturday everyone uh, may it be special for someone may someone that was my prayer before i started but i may someone receive the praying spirit because for me it's a spirit the way i have been sucked in i just want to stay me in this atmosphere i just want to love it the way i love it now and it it it, it, it builds up because the more you open yourself to it the more it, it fills you up you know so and then you come to your lines it's so worth it spending one hour praying with someone on phone is better than spending even 30 minutes just in about what and who went up and came down and whatever happened wherever i'm not saying it's not a good thing to just though but i'm saying set your priorities right okay take care everybody god bless us all